Hello there everybody, my name is Bruno Brown and earlier today we saw Nate Simpson, the creative director of Star Theory Games, sit down with IGN to talk about Kerbal Space Program 2. And yeah, there is a little bit of info trickling out and some light has been shed on some things including the potential release date, uh, which I will talk about in a moment. Uh, so yeah, for obvious copyright reasons, I am not going to be showing uh, anything from that interview, but I will, of course, leave a link below in the description so that you can watch it for yourself. Uh, so yes, we have, of course, got a new developer and a new build, and you know, there has been a lot of talk about a particular shot of a red planet that bears a striking resemblance to Duna, but with its day-night Terminator the wrong way around. And I'm going to crawl out on a limb now and say that that could be something of a Pluto analog, uh, which is probably orbiting one of the new star systems, because uh, as far as Nate has said, the original Kerbal system is as it was, uh, so probably not going to see any new planets there. Uh, though the system has been enhanced, which I'm assuming means uh, new terrain types, new terrain maps, and textures, and that kind of thing, uh, but probably no new bodies, though that hasn't been ruled out completely, and personally, I would like to see a new object in the asteroid belt, and maybe call it something along the lines of Planet Scott Kerman or something, uh, you know, which would be a nice tip of the hat. So we also saw some more pre-alpha game play and got a shot of a launch complex, uh, which is probably part of the enhancement of the Kerbal system that Nate mentioned. Uh, though it does look as though we have multiple launch pads on the ground and you know, it does seem to resemble Kennedy Space Center a little bit more. And of course I am guessing that the multiple launch pads is to facilitate the upcoming multiplayer, uh, which is something that actually wasn't talked about in this interview. Uh, now, if you did watch my last video, I was, of course, speculating on how far the tech tree would go. And, you know, while it has been expanded, which probably does mean that the traditional parts will still be there as well, uh, there will be no warp drive in the base game. Uh, though, if you have played with Interstellar Mod or even Near Future Propulsion, uh, there will no doubt be some familiar systems. And Nate did, of course, mention the Orion Drive and also made comments about a metallic hydrogen engine. Uh, so yeah, more near future, sort of just out of reach technology as opposed to sci-fi reactors powered by dilithium crystals. Uh, we also got a little bit more information on the colonization systems, uh, which is going to be an integral part in KSP2, uh, which was very interesting to hear about. And it seems that our bases are, you know, going to be rigid body arrays uh, subject to the laws of physics and, you know, will be fully destructible. So, uh, yeah, basically it's a case that they're going to be much like the rockets and spacecraft we have been building and launching up until now. How well this is going to run on older systems remains to be seen, but you know, this is a new build and you know, while Unity does get a bad rep because that is of course due to the fact that it is available to every have a go dev, I mean I do have a copy of it myself, uh, but you know, Star Theory games are professionals and uh, hopefully a new build will remove some of the limitations of the original game, uh, though it is of course possible that it will introduce a whole variety of new problems. As he is watching Enter Elysium's video a few days ago, which I'm going to link below as well, he was of course wondering, uh, like many of us were, uh, whether or not we would be restricted to building in particular areas and, you know, be constrained to having a kind of a stock base uh, with no kind of design input from ourselves, uh, whether we liked it or not. And uh, so far, it seems that it will be more akin to the various colonization mods we have seen up to now. Though so rather than landing and connecting modules, it seems that we will be building or perhaps even 3D printing them on the surface. We did have Nate uh, coin the phrase a Kerbal Architecture Program, uh, which to me says we are going to have as much freedom as we have been allowed when building rockets and spacecraft up until now. And since these uh, structures are going to be in taking into account actual physics, uh, this could be just as entertaining as that has been. 
and with things like new terrain types and a super earth announced i'm guessing you know uh, that the gravity of a planet will play a huge role in the type and style of base that we end up building i am of course guessing that something along the lines of a short squat structure would work better on a super earth whereas a body like minmus or gilly might allow for you know taller less robust structures with perhaps a lower resource requirement so yes interesting stuff and something i am excited to hear more about uh, now of course there was an interesting thing in the pre-launch trailer where we did get this shot which looks to me like a cargo ship and I'm guessing how this system will work and uh, you know this is purely speculation we haven't seen any huge amount of gameplay yet uh, but I'm guessing that we will end up sending down mining and cargo ships uh, possibly with automated drones to gather resources and perhaps also be able to land some kind of a deployable module on the surface that will give us VAB type functionality to begin the construction of the base ahead of our crew's arrival. Or perhaps we will end up sending Kerbals on the journey too. That will of course hinge on whether or not life support is going to be in the game. Now during the interview we did, as I say, see some new pre-alpha gameplay and I did notice a rocket cut out mid-flight and fall back onto the launch pad. Now this more than likely has been done to show off the new explosion effects or it may be a case that new parts have a failure risk associated with them i'm hoping for the latter but i am of course assuming that this is uh, just a case that they wanted to show off and finally perhaps the most exciting news is that the release date has been set for spring of 2020 on pc uh, with xbox and playstation sometime after that and yeah i'm gonna make a guess at uh, sometime around april 20th uh, which is is of course just a guess from myself and you know obviously depends on when you think st bring starts and ends so yes ksp2 as far as i'm concerned is looking promising so far but there are big shoes to fill and yeah this is an ambitious project i will of course be keeping my eyes and ears open for more nuggets of information and until then i'm going to take this opportunity to say thank you very much for tuning in you have been watching bloomer brown on youtube and i will see you next time